Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon. Good. good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, I got a pretty good project for you here today. Uh, a local, uh, or I should say, a viewer of mine um, had. Let's try this over again, Dane, one more time. Uh, one of my viewers got a hold of me and asked me if I would help him out with a project. And what he's got here is a ski lift chair from a local mountain resort. And he's wanting to convert this into some backyard uh, furniture. And so what that's going to entail is putting some legs on it, a base. We're going to put some casters on it so he can roll it around the backyard. It's also nine feet tall and a little top heavy. So I'm going to cut about a foot off the top of it, weld it back on, trying to keep the same shape uh, as the ski lift chair so it still has that look. I'm also going to take about a foot off the total length of this, shorten that down. And so this thing will look like a ski lift chair, but a little bit more functional and a lot less top heavy. So let's get started on today's video. All right, so one of the first things that the uh, customer asked for is if he could uh, have this thing detachable or it could come apart. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is separate the chair from the frame itself. And you can see that uh, whoever had this before or the, the, the mountain resort had welded this thing together uh, on the bottom and the top right here. And so I've, I've just grabbed a uh, cutoff wheel and I'm cutting the welds off, cutting the bolts off and get this thing separated. Uh, that's the first thing I wanna do. You might, you might uh, notice I'm using some new abrasives here from Mercer Industries. Uh, more about them coming up here. Uh, real excited about uh, uh, partnering up with them and uh, I'll have more information about that in upcoming videos. So you know I started off with a four and a half inch uh, grinding wheel and then went to a six inch grinding wheel right there. I couldn't quite get through the two inch with the four and a half but, uh, but changing over to the six inch worked out pretty good. Once I got everything separated you can see the uh, chair uh, came apart and one of the things I wanted to do was was cut off a uh, uh, part of the length of the bar that sits above the chair. So I just took this is about seven inches right here So I just went ahead and and cut off the seven inches right there And then this is the top part uh, of the uh, of the chair itself and I'm cutting out about 13 inches there I'm just shortening the overall frame uh, getting everything uh, down to where it, it looks like it's uh, uh, Somewhat normal rather than being so tall and awkward so you can see I'm just uh, putting it all back together once I got it shortened up and uh, got everything all squared and tacked into position and I'm just welding this thing all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and leave these wells like this. I'm not going to grind them down in this particular uh, situation because uh, I want it to look like, you can see there's a lot of wells that are exposed right here so I just kind of wanted to make it look like it's part of it. Well that part is done. I'm just going to set it aside right now and uh, get to working on the chair itself. Now I just had some random material just sitting here in my shop and I'm not certain what I was going to use and the customer said hey it was up to me to just do whatever I thought needed to be done and so this is some inch and a half by three inch uh, uh, rectangular tubing and then this is some inch and a half by one inch rectangular tubing and I'm just cutting right here the flat bar stock for the ends. Once I got everything cut Took it over to the Burr King, kind of deburred everything, and uh, you know, getting it ready to 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 be assembled. There's a pile of material right there. So the first thing I want to do is get the end caps welded on. You know, this is something that doesn't need, really need to be done, uh, but it's something that I wanted to do. It it just makes it look like a finished product when you when you have end caps welded on. I'm going to grind everything down nice and flat, and it's just going to look like a uh, a nice finished product rather than just having some open tube right there. This is going by pretty smooth right here. I don't have any issues with that. Uh, you can see I just clamped right down to the welding table right there with the fixture clamps and uh, went around the outside and just uh, kind of ground the welds down nice and flat. You know, it had a little bit of rust on it, and so I just switched over to a 120 grit. Now, this is something that, you know, I'm used to just 40 or 36 grit flap disc. You know, it, uh, Mercer uh, provides a, a lot of different abrasives here, and uh, this is a 120 grit flap disc, and uh, that worked out really good for just kind of taking the rust off and cleaning things up pretty good prior to getting started. I just, I just like to have a fresh start with some good, clean material. 
All right, so I'm going to grab some clamps right here, and I'm going to get started. Now, this is something here that I, it, it, I actually spent a couple of hours doing this uh, off camera, trying to get the angles right, trying to get the, the, the shape right, and get something that looked like it was aesthetically pleasing or, or that was going to look like it, it should be on this chair. And uh, I, I spent so much time doing this. But ultimately, I came up with something that uh, I, I think is going to look pretty good. And once I got everything all lined up and squared away, I just tacked everything into place on both sides. Let me tell you, I'm glad that I got to this point right here because I had so much problems with uh, uh, this prior to it. But uh, hey, it's nice to get everything tacked in and, and get it ready to go. You know, one thing I was concerned about was also uh, this thing tipping over, you know. I, I settled in with 30 inch long, um, a base of 30 inches rather than 36, or I didn't want to have something too wide, and, and 30 inch seemed to be the the right amount. It, it was going to work out pretty good and look pretty good. So I, here I am, I'm just welding everything out all the way around. You know, guys, uh, a lot of people ask, you know, what, what settings I use. Well, well, you know, first of all, I'm operating off the HTP Pro Pulse 200 right here, and I'm using 35 thousandths wire. And uh, my go-to settings for this material is, is uh, you know, eighth of an inch thick or 095. Um, and I like to run it about 275 inches a minute. Uh, it seems to work really good. Now, I wanted to keep, uh, you know, uh, the, the aesthetics looking pretty good with this and so the the chair has got square tubing rectangular tubing round tubing So I, I got some lateral support right here I don't really need the lateral support because this is really super heavy-duty, but I wanted to put something in I wanted to get some round tubing incorporated into this deal to kind of make it look like it uh, it belongs so uh, I'm just cutting some lateral support right here, and you can see where I'm going to be uh, welding this in here uh, to the bottom part of the chair right here and then to the to the base of the of the chair right here and it's kind of going to give that round tube I've got some round tube going on already and it looks like it's just going to tie in pretty good now I didn't really get too critical with the cuts on this so I left myself with pretty big gap uh, to fill on some of this and uh, it's not a big problem. I just uh, took several passes, uh, not several, but a couple of passes over the top. Uh, was able to fill the gaps in, and that worked out pretty good. You can see right there, um, you know, just kind of a couple of passes, and then just went right around and filled in pretty good. One of the, one of the things I wanted to do also is put a, a base on the bottom of this right here. Uh, so when I drop the top part of the, of the chair in, or the, the top part of the frame of the chair, uh, it would stop on the on these stops right here, and of course I've got uh, uh, some drain holes in it. Uh, I'm sure that we're going to get some water. This is going to be outside, and I just want to have a place for the water to escape. Uh, just welding it out all the way around. This gives me an opportunity to uh, weld this out all the way around and fill in some of the areas that I had cut previously to to get that tube out. So that worked out pretty good. Everything just looked like it all came together right here. All right, so I got everything all done, and I just uh, took that 120 grit uh, flap disc and went around and took off all the BBs and cleaned up some of the wells and actually cleaned up some of the uh, the paint that was peeling off the existing chair right there and got it ready, uh, got ready to to paint. One of the last things I had to do right here is install these casters. Now these are some casters I got at my local metal supply store. A lot of thought went into this. I wanted to have something that was going to be durable, last long, and support a little bit of weight. And these are some really hard rubber casters. And uh, um, I talked to the metal supply store. They said these things will last a long time. It's a good quality rubber. So I settled on this. Now the thickness is about 14 gauge on this, which is unusual. Uh, it's pretty thin. Uh, and then welding it up to this, uh, you know, uh, eighth inch thick wall stuff uh, was a little bit of a challenge but uh, hey we just went around and I just got everything all filled in right there worked out pretty good and just like that everything is done so the one of the last things I had to do is to get a little coat of paint on there now you can see that uh, the the existing chair had some some black paint on there and I'm just putting a couple of coats of rust-oleum on here rolling it on kind of matching the, the texture that the chair had I just want it to look like it's all uh, you know belongs the way it's supposed to and and look right 
did the same thing with the top part of the chair right here you know it looks like that I didn't uh, get enough paint on the top part of that uh, whatever you want to call it but trust me I got everything coated off camera and I, I assured that all the paint got done well there it is complete this is a great little project a lot of fun to build Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my website at jimbosgarage.com. Follow us on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.